Let's get it started here. We got the real deal today, and it's about the trend and how do you join the trend. Everyone always says things like, the trend is your friend, buy the dips, that sort of a thing. But it's not so simple. You can't just sit there and start a chart and say, oh, this is a buy trend. That's a sell trend. Well, this is exactly where you should buy the dip, just hang out on the bid at any price. And if the stock's going up, you just sit there, get collected, and then make those profits. So what I wanted to go over is specifically, how do you buy the dip? How do you short the pop? How do you join that trend? And it all starts with one thing. You can't actually join the trend if you can't identify what the trend is. And the most simple thing, and everyone always talks about this, is when do you see higher highs and, 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 and higher lows? But you know what else you gotta think about? Sometimes you just look at signs of a reversal in the short term. I'm gonna point out more because the most extreme example of a trend is what happened in a lot of the crypto names recently. And so this is a good chart to go over because you have a stock which was in a clean downward trend. You can see it make a bottom. This is the key. It makes a nice consolidated bottom. And then right about in here, breaks the 50 period, breaks the 200 period moving average, and then suddenly you're starting to trend up. Now, if you can get that to the long side, great. I always think once you stop making lower highs, which is when you break this level, now you're off to the races. So you have this $14 level where it breaks out. To me, this is where you're starting a trend of the upside. What is the first thing you should look for? Can it hold the initial support where it broke out? Right at that $14 level. Okay, well, if you're buying the dip, pretty clean. You see it dip down in, it holds that level. You're buying out in front of previous resistance. That is the first thing you can look to. You have confluence with that. You've got the breakout price. You have the stock reversing trend. You've got a previous resistance. When it comes in, that is a level to work off of. And it even shows you a target. You've got 14 down here. You've got 16 out here. So you can be long that one. About 50 cents worth of risk on a swing, maybe 70 tops, and then you've got the break going into the upside. So that's an easy one on the daily chart. When you have something like that, where it's breaking clean levels to the upside, it gets past that next level forming the trend, and you can look back, have a couple of reasons to buy the dip as it retraces into that breakout price. But when you start talking about a trend on the intraday, it's a bit of a different story. Because it's not always going to be that simple when you see a stock trending in one direction or the other. Let's look at the other direction in Mara when there was a clear massive sell-off the other day. So you tried to break out at 28 even, and then you go right into an immediate downward trend. Now, you can sit there and say, oh, well, Mara's been fantastic. Look at that daily. Where are you buying the dip? No, as a day trader, this is now trending to the downside at the open. So what do you do when it's just falling, falling, falling? It's already down four, five dollars. You're talking about 15, 20 percent moves. I can't chase that, can you? Well, you go right back to the simple strategy. Before that fail, what's a level that actually works? Right in here, 24 dollars. It's 24 to that 28. So when 28 fails, be patient enough to wait for 24. You actually see it wick this bottom at 23, it bounces, and then right in here, where would you look to short the pop? If it shows weakness at a big level, that's the place to short the pop. If you can make something work in and around this mess here and get a better price level, congratulations. But the low hanging fruit is to simply wait till it makes a move into the big level at 24 and then work the short. The other thing you can do here is look at close prices as well. So if a stock closes right here down at about 22.75 that same day, look for any press back into it that fails. And that's exactly what happens at that open. It presses, bounces off the previous day's low, cannot break that. You're looking short in the pre-market range into that high, and then you get another move into the downside. You first, you've got to identify that trend. Then you've got to look at those simplistic levels that you can work with to either buy the dip or to short the pop. I always love to see big key previous resistance on the daily where it broke out. I like to look at those key levels from previous days 
where if it will support and arrange top to bottom as it goes back through that bottom, well, I want to short it back into that previous low. I want to long it back into that previous high. Once you see a bouncer, you've got yourself an out. You've got yourself an entry in front of it. You've seen the confluence because you had shares trading at that range before. And then Bob's your uncle. And the last thing you should always consider, if you are buying the dip in a strong stock, especially as a day trader, make sure the volume is still there with you. You do not want to be buying dips when the volume is gone. That's not what you're looking for. So the last thing you should always consider is it continuing to do good volume and allow that to be a bit of your guide as well. That's more specifically for day trading. So as always, you want the real deal. It's how do you buy those dips? How do you short those pops? How do you join the trend? Because in trading, the trend is always going to be your friend.